Hi there, my name is Dylan and welcome to the second lesson in the introduction to functions. In this lesson, we're going to be taking a closer look at independent and dependent variables. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to identify the dependent and independent variables and also calculate output values based on input values. In the previous lesson, we did some simple calculations based on the relationship between the amount of money paid and the mass of cans. But we did ignore several other factors that play a part in real life. Can you think of a payment that we'd need to make if we were delivering cans to the depot? Well, think about it. To deliver cans, we'd need transport, and transport costs money. And we'll be having a look at how some of these costs can affect our overall profit. Profit is how much money is gained after the costs have been deducted. A simple formula for profit is, profit is equal to the amount earned minus the costs. First of all, you need to understand dependence and independence. And I'm going to use an ordinary kitchen scale to illustrate this. To start with, the reading on the scale is zero. But look at what happens to the needle if I add one can. Look what happens if I add a second can. Do you see how the reading changes? Consider the two variables, namely the mass shown by the reading on the scale and secondly the number of cans on the scale. Which variable affected the other? In other words, which variable caused the other one to change? Think about it. Did the number of cans on the scale change because of the mass reading on the scale? No, the mass changed as the number of cans changed. Thus we say that the mass is dependent on the number of cans. On the other hand, the number of cans is independent of the mass. The variable that is affected or changed by a change in the other variable is known as the dependent variable. Now I hope that you did your task from lesson one and came up with a similar definition for dependent variable. Let's now look at the next part of task one and see if we can identify which is the dependent variable. Now remember, it's very important to define your variable so that other people will understand your formula. Here the amount paid is defined as the variable y, it's in rands, and the mass in kilograms is given by the variable x. Now it doesn't matter if you use different letters or symbols for your variables. Just go through the steps with me to make sure that you got the same result. So to calculate the amount paid for 20 kilograms, in other words when x is equal to 20, I simply need to substitute x in my formula with 20. So therefore y will be equal to 7 comma 3, multiplied by 20. Now an easy way to do this is to think of 20 as simply 10 times 2. And I know that 10 times 7 comma 3 is equal to 73. And if I double this, 73 times 2, I know that that is equal to 146. So therefore y is equal to 146. In this equation, which is the dependent variable? which variable changes because of a change in the other variable. Now we can use something called a flow diagram to illustrate this. Remember our equation is y is equal to 7 comma 3 multiplied by x. So we multiply x by 7 comma 3 to get an answer for y. Now in this case x is called the input value because that's what we put into the equation and y is the output value because that's what we get out of the equation. So in this equation our operator is 7 comma 3. We call that the operator because that is what we are doing to the input value. So our input values are over here and if I choose an input value of x equal to 1 we'll multiply that by 7 comma 3 and the output for that input value will be y equal to 7 comma 3. If I now choose a different input value, just label that as the output, if I choose a different input value of x equal to 10, I apply the operator and I get a different output now 
of y equal to 73. Now, I want you to try and visualize what this means in terms of real cans and real money. As the number of cans increases, the mass also increases. Look at what happens to the amount of money. It also increases. Do you know which is the dependent variable? Did you see that the variable y or the amount paid depends on the mass of cans or the variable x? In other words, the variable y is the dependent variable. Now the mass of cans does not depend on the amount paid and therefore x is the independent variable. The value of the dependent variable depends on the value of the other variable. The value of the independent variable is not affected by the other variable. When you define letters or symbols for your variables, remember that mathematicians usually use x for the independent variable and y for the dependent variable. Now, let's finish our task. So to calculate the mass of cans that must be sold to earn 200 rand, in other words, I know that y is equal to 200, I need to substitute y for 200 in my equation to get 200 is equal to 7 comma 3 times x. Now I know that 7 times 30 is 210. So by guesstimation, I know that my answer for x must be a little bit less than 30. Now if I were to rearrange this equation, I'd get that 200 divided by 7 comma 3 is equal to x. And if I do this calculation on my calculator, I will get an answer for x is equal to 27 comma 39. But if I round this up to one decimal place, I'll get that x is therefore approximately equal to 27 comma 4 kilograms. In other words, to get an output value of 200 rand, I need to put an input value of 27 comma 4 kilograms into my equation. So to earn 200 rand, I need to collect 27 comma 4 kilograms of cans. But to be sure that I earn my 200 rand, I should collect 28 kilograms of cans. But now we need to see what effect fixed costs will have on our profit. Because generally speaking, we always need to spend some money before we start making some money. So let's say, for example, that the transport costs to and from the depot are a fixed cost of 20 rand. How do you think this is going to affect the formula we used in the previous lesson? Let's take a look. Here y is defined not as the amount paid, but the profit we make after we have taken into consideration this new value of transport cost. Do you remember how we defined profit? Remember, it is the amount you make after you have paid all of your expenses. Now let's try and illustrate this with a flow diagram. Now, as before, we need to multiply our input values by 6, 5. Remember, that is the amount we get paid per kilogram of cans. But now this time, we also need to consider our transport costs. Now, those are things we have to pay. That's going to deduct from our overall profit. So we then need to subtract 20. So we're going to feed our input values in on this end, which will be kilograms of cans. And we're going to get output values on this end, which will be rands that we earn. So any input value is subject to two operations. We first need to multiply it by 6 comma 5 and then we need to subtract 20 to get our final output value. Now let's choose some input values and to start with I'm going to choose input values that are easy to multiply by 6 comma 5. If I choose an input value of say 10, I first need to multiply this by 6 comma 5 which will give me an answer of 65 and if I subtract 20 from that I'm going to get a final output value of 45. If I choose another input value of 20, which I can see is to simply 2 times 10, I know that 10 times 6 comma 5 is 65, so if I double that for my input value of 20, I get 130, and if I subtract 20 from that, I will get a final output value of 110. If I now choose an input value, say, of 1, I know that 1 times 6 comma 5 is simply 6 comma 5, but if I subtract 20 from that, I get a final output value of minus 13 
comma 5. Now, what does that last value mean? Why is the output value negative? Well, remember what our flow diagram represents. It does not represent how much money we get paid. It represents how much profit we make. Now, we saw that if our input value was x equals 1, our output value was minus 13,5. Therefore, if we just sold 1 kilogram of cans, we'd get paid 6 rand 50, but our transport costs would be 20 rand. Therefore, we would need to pay more money than we were earning. We would not be making a profit. Now, let's try and figure out how many kilograms of cans we do need to sell to start making a profit. Now, let's see what the output will be if our input is 2 kilograms. Now, 2 times 6,5 is 13. But if I subtract 20 from that, I make an output value of minus 7. I'm not making any profit at all. If I now sell 3 kilograms of cans, in other words, my input is 3, 3 times 6,5 is 19,5. Subtract 20. Oh, I'm almost there because my output value is minus 0, 0,5. So I'm almost breaking even. So can you see that when I sell 3 kilograms of cans, I'm almost at the profitable level, but I'm still making a loss. What do you think is going to happen if I now were to sell 4 kilograms of cans? Let's take a look. If my input value is now 4, I know that 4 times 6,5 is 26. If I subtract 20, my output value is a positive number now. It is positive 6. Hence, I am making a profit. I'm actually making 6 Rand profit. Now, 6 Rand profit might not seem like a lot, but at least it's a profit. Now, remember, we were working with whole numbers, but there are many rational numbers between 3 and 4, which would also give you a profit. Let's now take a look at your task. Make sure that you understand and can apply the concepts of dependent and independent variables and input and output. Now the depot also buys steel cans. The amount paid per kilogram of steel cans is 40 cents and the transport cost is 20 rand per round trip. Define variables for the amount paid and the mass. Use a flow diagram to calculate the mass for which you start making a profit. I trust that you enjoyed this lesson and learnt a lot. Do join me for the next lesson called Patterns.